DH-90 de Havilland Dragonfly Golf Alpha Echo Delta Uniform was built in 1937, one of only 66 of which now only two flying examples survive. Designed as a luxury transport, her construction was a development of the Comet Racer in that the fuselage is a preformed plywood monocoque shell. This technique of construction was later used in the DH-98 Mosquito. Originally registered as Charlie Romeo Alpha Alpha Bravo, she flew in Mozambique until 1961, when she was re-registered Zulu Sierra Charlie Tango Romeo after a rebuild at Rand Airport. After many years of neglect, in 1979 she was brought back to the UK and re-registered as Golf Alpha Echo Delta Uniform, and she was rebuilt to flying condition. In fact, she flew the Atlantic on two occasions. In 2014, she was acquired by Peter Greenier to take pride and place in the Shipping and Airlines historic collection. She is um, an outstandingly beautiful aeroplane. I was aware of the aeroplane. Um, I never ever thought I'd own her. Um, and um, I've been uh, involved with other aircraft that have come from the same stable, so to speak, but I never ever thought that the Dragonfly would be let go. Uh, and uh, it all came out of the blue, really. Uh, one one uh, evening I was uh, telephoned by the owner's uh, engineer to say, if you want this Dragonfly, you better buy it now, because otherwise it will be away to America and we can possibly let that happen. So the rest of it, as they say, is history. The A-check is usually performed by one of the crew who are needed to start Delta Uniform. The two individual main fuel tanks are selected on. The yoke is checked for full movement of the elevators and ailerons. The magnetos are off. The flaps are checked open and closed. Both throttles are checked closed. The general walk around includes checking all the surfaces for any damage and the struts and flying wires for security. The tyres and exhaust look OK on both engines. The locker and its contents are tidy and correctly loaded. To keep the C of G in place, weight is either added or subtracted from here depending on the number of passengers. The elevator hinges are free to move and the rear tyre pressure is OK. The rudder has full and free movement. Each engine in turn is given a thorough check, beginning with the oil level. The propeller is in good condition with no nicks or dents. To access the engine, a large pin is removed from the front cowling and clips on the side are adjusted to allow the cowling to be raised and secured open. Each exhaust is inspected for any sign of a blowing gasket. The oil scraper ring is rotated to remove any debris. The cowling is replaced and we are now fit to fly. With the passengers aboard, the ground crew need to flood the carburetors with fuel and prime each cylinder on each engine by pulling through the propeller. Alright, okay, the fuel's on, brakes are on, mags are off. Off and closed. Left one there.
technique on this aeroplane is, is, is quite easy compared with some. We have a, uh, a huge benefit in this aeroplane of having disc brakes fitted. They weren't fitted to the original aeroplane, they had bowling cable brakes, which would have been a very difficult thing to do. Um, but we're very fortunate to have disc brakes that are pedal operated, so you can uh, operate it very much like a modern light aircraft with the uh, toe brakes at the top of the rudder pedals uh, being depressed uh, to give you differential braking, which will allow the aircraft to move one way or the other because of the differential braking being applied to the disc brakes. Rub, absolutely standard. Um, instead of having one engine, we've obviously got two, but the run-up checks are precisely the same as you'd expect in something like a Hornet Moth or a Messenger. It'll be a matter of making sure the engine is properly warmed, the brakes are set, and bring the RPMs up to something like 1700 RPM, check the temperatures and pressures, and then individually check the magnetos, make sure the drop is acceptable. Um, there's no carburetor heat on this particular machine, being Gypsy Major. That's about it then, apart from the slow running. Um, once that's complete, the checks are done. Takeoff technique with this aeroplane, once again, we have an added bonus of having a tailwheel lock, which is unusual. So, apart from the usual of making sure that the pre takeoff checks are carefully completed, as you would do with any aircraft, as this one lines up on the runway and becomes centralised on the centre line, the pilot on his left, under his left knee is a, uh, a manual tailwheel lock which needs to be engaged. That will ensure that the tail will remain straight uh, in line with the runway all the time it's in contact with the runway. So if you have a significant crosswind running, you can at least keep the tail down for a fairly long period of time and give you the added advantage of uh, a, uh, a locked tail wheel so that the thing won't necessarily swing one way or the other. Downwind checks would be standard downwind checks. The only issue with this particular aeroplane is it only has a ventral flap. That's the only flaps we have available. We try and land it with the flap extended. The flap limited speed is quite limited in the sense that 75 is the target airspeed, 90 is the top of the white arc, 55 is stall. So you've got to get in there at 75, you've got to slow it down to 75 and then get the flap in and the flap at 75, the pressure on the flap lever is quite significant. You really do have to heave on it. Once you've heaved on it and got the flap engaged, you get a significant pitch up moment from flap extended. 
So the technique tends to be get the speed right, get the ball in the middle and wings level, yeah. at the same time push forward on the stick to push the nose down and then re-trim. Once it's re-trimmed with a bit of power, you're fine. Well, on September the 9th of this year, we had an 80th birthday for uh, Delta Uniform. We call her the Duchess, so she's become one of our family. And we like people to know quite how old these aeroplanes are. They're all flyers, of course, but some people assume that they're a little bit younger than perhaps they might be. And it's nice just to reinforce that by having a, a birthday with a number on it. And it was a great success. We had lots of uh, interesting people, including the former owner. Martin Barraclough, who was one of the previous owners of Delta Uniform, who's a, a very, very nice chap, who came along and was reunited with the aeroplane, so that was a very okay. nice day.